how crazy this birdhouse is. What's up everybody? Today we're gonna be doing some motion tracking. Motion tracking is tracking the movement of your camera or object or person, whatever you want to track. And using that data to drive the animation in your software or align your scene to whatever footage you have. It's very great for visual effects. So the first step is to open up a Blender project under the VFX template. And we are going to need to import our footage here. So you just do that by clicking the open button and then navigating to your footage wherever it may be. All right, now that we have our footage in Blender, we can start going over the different settings over here. And so the first thing that we're gonna look at is the clip settings, which if this is collapsed, then you just click the little arrow to open it up. There's set scene frames, which sets the amount of frames for your scene, which is located here as your timeline. And the next thing we're gonna do is click prefetch. And this is uh, dependent on your RAM, on how many frames it prefetches. I got about 129 frames for me. So I'm just gonna go to 120 so we can have it all smoothly play back while we're working here. So the first thing we're gonna look at is how to place a marker. You can hit control and click right here to place a marker and you want to place it on a point of high contrast and something like that. If you want to widen the search area or the pattern area, you can do so by clicking S to scale and then opening that up here. I want it something like that. And if you ever want to see what this looks like from really zoomed out, just click on this track right here and that shows you what it is. So the next thing we're going to do is go through and select our tracking settings here. I will go over the detect features and add and delete a little bit later. So there are different types of motion models and you can click the drop down and select whichever one you would prefer. Location, which is what it's selected on now, is just going to give you the location data. Location rotation same kind of deal location and scale same kind of deal location rotation and scale it's gonna give you all three of those the ones that really need explaining are perspective which is going to show the perspective shift in your footage so for this one in this case if I go back to the beginning there's not really a perspective shift but there is some shearing and motion and if you want to move a tracker just click on the tracker hit G to move and just like that and R to rotate not that you would need to. What we're going to do now is change this to affine, which gives you all directions of movement. This will give you the most accurate outcome. So the pre-pass is where it uses a brute force translation only initialization when tracking. What that means is that it only tracks the translation and then uses that data as a kind of uh, before pass on tracking the data. And normalize will normalize the light intensities while the tracking is happening. And that does slow down your track a little bit, but it gives you better results. Uh, basically, it boosts the contrast and does some math to, to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the track right here. And these are all your track settings. And the track settings are going to basically give you everything that you need for your particular tracks right here. So you have track backwards one frame, track backwards to the beginning, track forwards to the end, or track forwards one frame. And you also have clear, where you can clear the track path going one way or the other, and then you can refine the selected marker positions by running the tracker from the track's reference point to your current frame. So here's the track reference point, which is 120. If I go here, I can refine from here to 120 and join and average tracks. Say I want to track a few things and some of them don't actually work how I want them to work. You can select three tracks by holding shift and clicking each one and then click join tracks or average tracks. And that averages all of the data to one tracking point here. So let's hit Control Z to get rid of those other trackers because we don't need them. And we're just gonna track this one single point for now so I can show you how it works. Whenever you're going through these track settings here, you have some here on the graph editor, you have some here in the track panel, but there's also hotkeys, which are fantastic. If you want to track backwards to the beginning, you do Control, Shift, and T and that will track to the very beginning. And it looks like we got a pretty solid track. But that's not enough. 
what we need is eight good trackers to have the proper motion in our scene and blender will not let you do anything less than eight so in that case we have all of these but i think i'm gonna go to the frame that has the most information that's sustained throughout the entire footage if possible and just use that same frame that we used on the first one if you want to lock a track you can hit the l on the keyboard and that will lock the track so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll back up here to this marker option and we have add delete and detect features we don't care about add or delete because we use hotkeys for that so what we're going to do is click on detect features and this is going to detect a bunch of features in the scene in order to gain the proper motion and what you can do is just select all of them with a and hit s to scale and that scales those up. So now we can have all these tracks and track forward to, or track backwards to the end. But we're gonna use hotkeys, so control shift and T again, again. Okay, so that didn't take as long as I thought it would. So as you can see, this is the graph or that movement in the scene and everything is tracked. But as you can see, some of these tracks didn't make it. That's okay, we will honor our fallen comrades by deleting the tracks that are a little too wild. We can go here and clean up a little bit. So let's go here and hit all of the tracks and do filter tracks and then some crazy high number. So all of these tracks are probably bad, so we're gonna delete those. And as you can see, there's some stragglers down here. Down here. The red lines here are for the X and the green lines are for the Y as far as the translation here. All right, so we're gonna select all of these. And now that we have all of those tracks in place, we can go here and look at our solve settings. So if you are wanting to track footage that was done on a tripod, you would select tripod. This is things such as a panning movement, a tilting movement, or something along those lines that's locked off on a tripod and doesn't have any spatial Movement, only axis movement and this keyframe button right here that basically selects two keyframes throughout the entire footage that it has the most motion data what you can do is you can click that and that will have blender estimate what that is there are some more refined settings here so we'll go through those this lets you refine your focal length if you don't know what was shot on this came from a stock footage website, Pexels, hashtag not sponsored. I don't know what it was shot on or anything like that. So I'm just gonna select all of these, every single one of them. That is just Blender guessing what all of the camera settings are. So after that, we are going to click on solve camera motion and this can take a little bit of time. It is selecting the keyframes first and then it will refine. All right, and it solved our camera motion and now we have a solve error of 0.74. This track is great, but it could be better. What we can do is we can go up here to clip display and click on info and that is going to give us all of our pixel errors on the footage so we have a ton of track marks so let's go ahead here and see which ones we can find that have a pixel error of over one so let's get a good zoom here and just go through and select all of these you can also delete them if they are close to one like this one and if you want to see what all of them are again just hit a on the keyboard to select all of your tracks tracks Okay, and now what we can do is after we've refined all of these keyframes and deleted the ones that have the larger than one pixel, we can go through and find ones that are over than 0.5 and lower their influence. And you can go here, here, and then go over here to weight and just lower that to, uh, let's do 0.5. Just do that for all of the ones that you don't really want to have all of that much weight. Now we are going to zoom out and we don't really need this anymore so we can go to clip display and click info and just highlight everything again and click on solve camera motion again and that was a little bit faster this time and as you can see we have a solve error of 0.51 which is good enough for me so go down here to geometry 3d markers to mesh or link empty to track and we're going to select all of our track markers and hit l to lock them all and then we're going to do link empty to track and that is going to in our viewport give us the tracking motion as you can see it is moving now what we can do is we can set what the floor is by clicking three of our track marks you want to select three that are close together and click on floor and that is going to make that our floor 
as you can see the y-axis is lined up right there there's our y-axis and you can also set as background and that is going to put it as the background see the y-axis is right here on this line and it's fairly fairly good uh, but we can do a little bit better so if we need to adjust it a little bit what we do is click the camera and then hit R Z and line that up more. now it is perfectly in line with our footage so now we can click on setup tracking scene and that puts a cube right in here and as you can see you have this foreground and background layers on here it actually gives you two different render layers and whenever i render this and uh you know this is kind of bulky we're, we're kind of done in here so i'm just going to go to plus sign general layout and now we can set up our scene so i like this uh, i like this cube here so let's go g z and then one to put it on the ground plane set origin to 3d cursor and now we have this this should be a shadow catcher i'm going to go to this plane scroll down to visibility and you should have this shadow catcher checked already for it so let's go to render mode now you can see if i go to film transparent that we have our cube in our scene and it's lined up perfectly see it looks like it's not really lined up for us so instead of putting the y-axis here we can go back to our motion tracking and click on three different ones and let's do these three and do floor and let's do this one as our y-axis and this one as our x-axis should be a little more lined up and the road is not really going the, the same direction as what I have here but you can see it's still tracked to the scene so you line it up like that and you can kind of eyeball the size here and you can also go to edit mode x-ray and just grab these and stick them right there you want to do G shift to Z and then that moves it just on the X and Y axis so now we have this lined up completely with our footage we'll just get it close enough so let's move that one G X and now it's lined up with the scene on there so say we wanted to have it pop out we can actually reline it up actually on here and we're close but no cigar stretch those on the y-axis a little bit now we have this thing and you know what if you want to do a uh, kind of cool a cool animation coming from underground so just bring that under there a little bit and then we will go back to our cube and click on the object data properties and we we're actually going to use shape keys to have this uh, kind of pop out of the ground so we'll do one for the basis and then another one for the first key and you can rename these by going to double click that and say pop and go into edit mode with this shape key selected grab the top two and hit g z to go up and now we have a big kind of uh wall coming up in our scene big black square really and uh go back and you can see it's gone so uh, what you do with this is you just go to the very beginning and you hit a keyframe on this value right here for this shape key and then you go to the very end and then you go all the way up to one and now you should have a wall that pops up and it's coming up but i don't like how slow that's going so let's go here grab this and bring it uh, about 24 frames so then you go here and it goes up all the way up to 24 frames and then stops and then let's grab it again at 96 frames and have the copy and paste flipped and that is going to give us the opposite of these keyframes with the underground for the first one above ground for the second one above ground for the third one and below ground for the fourth one so now it's going to look something like this this is wrong what happened that's okay uh what we can do is just change this to one and then change this one to zero and now we have this 
we have a wall coming up and then a wall going down and these keyframes are interpolated as bezier so what we can do is bring this up and we're going to change this to graph editor so as you can see this is our graph and it looks just like any other keyframe graph that you've ever seen if you have not seen one then there's a different video for you out there uh, so what we can do is we'll just focus on these two right here say we want to ex exaggerate the movement so we'll grab this one and hit g x and bring that in and then gx and then bring that one out so it should be a uh, swoosh instead of a just a gradual thing so as you can see it's uh, slightly different the way it goes up and then the way it comes down so what we can do is click on our cube again and we can go over here and just do the same thing and i usually go about as far as the other keyframe and still have it to where the S is just in one of these grid. So now it should be about the same. And there we go. And now we have our footage. It comes up and the wall goes down. We just need to add some cool textures to our stuff. And let's go to render mode, shift A, and we can go to our plus sign again and then do shading so now we have to shade our wall here and there's tons of ways you can do this uh, different shaders and everything like that but i think we're just going to stick with a standard white shader and uh, we'll go to world and open this up to Nishida sky texture and hit zero on the numpad and then just see where our shadow is. Bring this ground up here and then just remember to bring it back whenever you're going to render because this is always going to be the shadow that's behind it. It does some compositing stuff that we'll go over in a minute. Uh, so we want to match this shadow to be about the same as this cast shadow right here. So what we're gonna do is go to our rotation and hit 90 and I don't like that. So let's go back a little bit and I kind of like it like that. It's, it, see, it's going past this shadow here and uh, the sun is a little intense. So we can raise the size right here on our Nishida sky texture to uh, give it a little bit of softness. And you don't wanna give it too much because you, you want to match the softness of this shadow here otherwise you're gonna have a back composition and also as you can see our shadow catcher is not really uh, doing much for us it's cutting off the shadow back there so we're going to we're gonna scale that up and then we have this big shadow on the back of our footage here uh, so the next thing we are going to do is put something cool on here to our material library and hit brick and just choose one you like. I use Materialic and you can use whatever you want to use, honestly. And we can click on Render Image and it's gonna render the foreground and the background and then composite them together. And it's composited together now. So we're gonna go to Compositing. And in Compositing, you can just hit V to zoom out, set our nodes here. And the first thing I wanna do is get our shadow taken care of so let's go shift a and add in rgb curves and we're going to go to blue and just raise the blue just a little bit but as you can see it does the whole thing blue so what you want to do is go up here to this alpha over node which is what composites everything together and click on convert convert pre-multiply and that will just do the shadow which is a little bit too blue at this point so let's go down a little bit right there and then the next thing we're going to do is shift d and put this on our brick and just click convert pre-multiply again and at this point we are going to just hit backspace on that to adjust the colors to our liking this way um i want to kind of match if we hit v i want to kind of match this over here 
for the color. So uh, that is way too dark. So let's go back up a little bit. That, that's almost there, almost, almost there. And the next thing we're gonna do is just add a hue, saturation, and value to adjust some of those settings. Uh, so for the background, the value can be darker, maybe a little darker, a little bit less saturated. Nope, I actually kind of like it more saturated, just a tiny, tiny bit less. And we're not gonna mess with the hue. So let's go here and let's do about 0.75 on the saturation for that. That is way, way too dull. Uh, although it does kind of look like a uh, kind of white brick that's coming out of there. I, I do kind of like that, honestly. But let's darken the value a little bit and let's just do 0.8 on that i kind of like that uh still a little too bright for my liking so let's go down and about there uh, that looks a little better for sure all right and this is the end result thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video if you did smash that subscribe button and hit the like and the bell for notifications anytime i post a video and as always, I'm Brandon, and you can get these files on my Patreon, and the link is in the description. Drop a comment on what you think I should do next.